Philip and Holly are back today along with Colleen Nolan to launch our brand new hub. Find out more about that on this morning at 10.30. First, it's Monday the 6th of September on ITV1 and ITV1 HD with a brand new way to launch your day. It's Daybreak. Good morning. Welcome to Daybreak. Yes. Dawn, it's happening. Day is breaking behind us here. It's a beautiful scene here behind us in the studio. There's St Paul's in the background. The sun is up and thank goodness we spent good money bringing you this view. I yeah. promise you're putting us here. At least you can see it. Thank yeah. goodness for that. Thank you very much for joining us on our first day. This is Adrian Childs. And she is Christine Blakely. And these are the stories we're waking up to on Monday, September the 6th. Four years on, 100,000 Christmas club savers are still waiting for compensation. We have an exclusive investigation into the Fairpack scandal. Security is under review for Tony Blair. Protests are growing over his memoirs. He'll be with us here in the Daybreak studio this morning. And he's out. Andy Murray has lost overnight in the US Open. Dan, the sportsman is here, Murray's out, but Rooney's in. Yeah, absolutely. A damaging kiss and tell story hit the Sunday papers, but Rooney stays with England for now. And Steve, you've got Jacko news. Yeah, just when you thought there was nothing else to say about Michael Jackson, there will be a brand new documentary being made. I'll have more on that later. And Lucy Verasami is our weather woman. What's happening, Lucy? Well, there's lots happening. After a settled start to the new month, it's all changed this week. Windy and wet from the west. Our top story this morning, an exclusive investigation into the Fairpack savings fiasco. Incredibly more than 100,000 families still haven't had a penny in compensation. Four years ago, the collapse of the Christmas Club left savers millions of pounds out of pocket. Eventually, in April, they were promised just 15p for every pound they saved. So why have they still not been paid? Our special correspondent, John Stapleton, reports. He was the face of the Fairpack fiasco, a little boy whose Christmas was ruined when the company collapsed. My mum and dad were trying hard to get things for me. Oh, sweetheart, come on. The Verdons never got the presents they'd saved for in the Fairpack Saving Club. Myself had saved fifteen hundred pounds. Um, the whole syndicate had saved five and a half thousand. Uh, but my mum and my sister were involved as well, so our whole family Christmas was wiped out. Now, nearly four years on, Daybreak can reveal they are still waiting for compensation. For the fifteen hundred pounds she saved, Denise Verdon will eventually get back just two hundred and twenty-five pounds. The Verdons aren't the only ones. 120,000 other families still haven't had back a single penny of their savings. That's twice the number of people it takes to fill this, the Emirates Football Stadium. Fairpax customers saved all year for hampers and other gifts. Thousands of them, many pensioners or people on low incomes, put £37 million aside. But when the firm went bust, it all turned rotten. After a national outcry, the Department of Business compiled a 700-page report into the affair, but the government still hasn't made its findings public. They're saying it must remain secret, there are data protection issues, and there is possibly a prosecution pending. Council are considering that at the moment. From my perspective, I can't see why sections of the report can't be put in the public domain. Four years ago, in the House of Commons, the Fairpack directors were called immoral. But after legal action last April, some of those directors handed over £4 million. So why have they still not been paid? Well, accountants charged with liquidating the company said that's because lawyers are now considering further legal action against some of those involved, which, if successful, could mean more money for the savers. As for the £4 million already handed over, well, again, they're waiting for the end of the legal proceedings. Any interest gain they're sure is will go to the Fairpack customers. I can tell by the, the tone of your voice you still find this upsetting. Yeah. You feel let down or angry? What, what, what's your abiding emotion? It's both, really, because I just feel as if I've let everybody down. 
While Fairpack customers still haven't got their money back, some people have done quite well out of the affair. The lawyers have quite legitimately charged fees of almost £1.4 million. And the liquidators, BDO, again, quite legitimately, have run up fees of nearly £3 million. The customers, meanwhile, are bottom of the pile. John's here. Is there a mechanism in place for this, John, to stop this from happening again with other Christmas savings? Well, clubs? some hope, yes. I mean, after the Fairpack affair, the government encouraged the big boys in, in the industry to form a trade association called the Christmas uh, Prepayment Association, zippy little title. But one, the one thing that does is it guarantees people who save with them that that money won't be used for other purposes, which is what allegedly happened in, in the case of, of Fairpack. But uh, just a word of warning, we tried six times uh, last week to try and get hold of the Christmas Prepayment Association, and they didn't respond once but I think we should do something certainly about the fact that people like these savers are bottom of the pile in these circumstances known as unsecured creditors they didn't regard themselves as unsecured creditors they regarded themselves as savers and they thought their money was safe and sadly it wasn't and I think government needs to take a look at that so if you're saving with these clubs now the question people want answering is is, is your money safe or well, could 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 your club do another fair pack on that uh, if it's with these big boys your money will not be used for other purposes that's as far as we can go to say I, mean, I, I, I think it would be safe yeah if you're saving with people who are not in that association it might be different, so buyer beware as ever. Okay, mm. John, nice to see you, thanks John. very much. Uh, other main story, the concerns over Wayne Rooney's state of mind and whether he'll play in tomorrow night's uh, crucial England match against Switzerland. With more on that, here's Tasman Lucia Cam. Morning, Tasman. Morning, it's being reported that manager Fabio Capello will assess Wayne Rooney's mental health before the team travel to Basel this morning. It's after revelations about his private life at the weekend. Our North of England correspondent Lucy Watson reports. He's England's footballing finest, the talisman of the team, and his personal life in the headlines puts his position on the line. Wayne Rooney is alleged to have cheated on his wife with a prostitute while she was pregnant with their first child. There's not been sight nor sound of the Rooney household here in Cheshire over the past 24 hours. They've remained tight-lipped about the claims, but those claims have forced Fabio Capello to have his player assessed before he even gets on the plane to Basel later this morning. For this is a player whose football normally does the talking, but with it comes the trappings of fame and fortune. Allegations of infidelity, a reflection of the times. When you're a professional footballer, you haven't got a private life. Whether you like it or not, you belong to the public. He will battle against it. If it is possible, you will see a better Wayne Rooney, a better player, a better goal scorer, and in the future, a great captain, possibly, for England. A future leader, maybe, but right now, a man simply fighting for his place in the team. A group of MPs will today demand an emergency statement from the Home Secretary. Secretary is after alleged phone tapping by the News of the World. A former reporter for the paper has said that his editor at the time, Andy Coulson, who's now the Prime Minister's Head of Communications, knew it was happening. Cordelia Kretschmar reports. The Tory spin doctor fast becoming the story. Today the Home Secretary is under pressure to make an emergency statement about him. The questions whether one of the most powerful men in government knew that News of the World reporters were hacking into MPs' phones, and why the Met apparently failed to fully investigate it. Very serious allegations have been made. I want Theresa May, the Home Secretary, to reassure the House of Commons that she's using all pressure she can to let the police investigate this inquiry properly. We need no stone unturned. It comes as Scotland Yard says it may reopen the case. Detectives are now looking at fresh allegations made by a former News of the World reporter that hacking was widespread at the tabloid and that then-editor Andy Coulson knew about the practice. In a statement last night, Assistant Commissioner John Yates said the Metropolitan Police had not been aware of these allegations before they were published in the New York Times last week. He said detectives had now asked the paper for further information and that they'd consult the Crown Prosecution Service on whether to take further action. Andy Coulson told the Prime Minister he didn't know anything about the phone hacking and so far Downing Street has backed him to the hilt. If it turns out that he did, it'll call into question David Cameron's judgment and the standards he requires of the people closest to him. Tony Blair's security is under review this morning after protests at a book signing in Dublin over the weekend. Eggs and shoes were thrown at the former Prime Minister as he arrived to sign copies of his memoirs. There are worries he may be greeted by more protests in London later this week. 
Only the brightest and best foreign students will be allowed into the country in the future. In a speech today, the Immigration Minister Damien Green will say too many are currently being let in. 38,000 overseas students who came to the UK in 2004 were still here five years later. Police investigating the death of a young man whose badly burnt body was found on a golf course will release details of the post-mortem examination today. The body was found at the Dyke Golf Club near Brighton on Saturday. It's thought the man was murdered elsewhere before being taken to the club and set on fire. Britain's number one tennis player Andy Murray is out of the US Open. He was beaten in four sets by the Swiss player Stan Wawrinka. He suffered thigh and elbow injuries during the match but admitted after his opponent was the better player. A Pakistan cricketer who was filmed accusing his teammates of match-fixing has said he was only repeating what he had read in the papers. Batsman Yasir Hamid said he was misled by the news of the world and that he didn't know he was being filmed. Three other players are currently being investigated for alleged corruption. It's now thought that as many as 10 million people could be owed money by the government after paying too much income tax. Errors in the HM Revenue and Customs tax code system led to the problems they were picked up when a new computer was introduced. It may take up to four years for rebates to be paid. The 33 miners trapped underground in Chile could be free by November. The Chilean mining minister said the rescue effort was going well and the men could be freed earlier than previously thought. Relatives of the miners spoke to them via a video link for the first time at the weekend. That's the news for now. It's 11 minutes past six. 11 minutes gone. No major mess up so far. Well, you know. I'm sure you'll agree. It's an absolute We're clinging triumph. on, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to have a look around our new studio? Yeah. It is marvellous. Let's take you through the timekeeping first. You've got the time on your hmm. screen. I personally, in my eye line there, I'm referring to the, uh, the clock on the roof of the uh, of the shell building over there. Yeah. We've got another clock though, haven't we? Have, we have, we've got let's a very just, own let's clock. Let's show you around, shall we? will give you a sense of the geography, yeah. actually, of the whole place here. This is our new home, technically, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, that's our very fancy, very big clock. It's not fancy <laughs> at all. It's very plain. 12 numbers, big hand, little hand. It's Even I can get my head around that. It's plain, but that's a good thing. OK. We've got uh, brand new steps. Yeah. This screen here, by the way, we haven't got a use for that at the moment. So if you want it, make us an offer, and we'll see what we can do. I'm sure we can do you a good price. <laughs> Oh, look who's here, Dan, beavering away on his sports bulletin. Yeah, Eggs, yeah. bread, yeah, milk. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Meals look how one. hard he works. <laughs> And this is a, a nice little area, actually. Yeah. Lucy feels at home here. This yes. is where our weather is going to take place and yeah. various other little bits and pieces. How does it feel for you, Lucy? Are you happy? It feels very nice. I've got lots of space to walk around and give you the forecast in a little bit. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, good. We like that. And you just saw, of course, yeah. the gorgeous Tasman. Here's the news, the news hotbed. Air five, like that. Air, air, one, two. air five. Air five. I've just learned yeah. how to do that. <laughs> so that is it. Our new home for the next while. We that hope. Is some view behind us over there? <laughs> Magnificent. Is. What about the weather? It's, it's a long way to throw over to you Lucy. Know where she is now. Lucy, she is. weather. <laughs> I'm here. Good morning. Hi. Thanks, guys. Well, before we get into a full forecast, here on Daybreak, we're going to give you an idea of how the weather is looking right now as dawn is breaking across the country as you're getting up for school and for work. We've got live weather cameras, the length and breadth of the country. Our Daybreak cameras are live to the north and the south first thing this morning. Clear skies at the rolling hills of Fife. Here, cloud bubbling up through the course of the morning. The wind's picking up, but essentially a dry start, dry across Scotland for much of the day. Gateshead, dawn is already broken. Beautiful there, Gateshead and Newcastle. No fog on the tyne this morning. Lots of lovely sunshine as you're getting up for work, but the wind's picking up over the next few hours. And then down to the waterfront in Cord Cardiff. Here too, mostly calm and dry first thing, but watch out, there will be clouds thickening up, bringing outbreaks of rain later and turning increasingly windy down in Wales today. And then down to the southwest, Port Isaac. Quite dull down there this, this morning, down in uh, Cornwall. Looming grey clouds, lashings of rain by the middle of the morning and here to gale force winds over the next few hours and then down to the southeast well Cambridge looking fine and dry King's College here clear blue skies a lovely sunrise and the same goes for the white cliffs of Dover here too beautiful and bright some lovely clear skies to start the new day so that's the way things are looking right now now let's have a look at the full forecast <laughs> Daybreak weather, sponsored by Nestle Cereals. Proudly waving the banner for Holgrim. 
Hello again. Good morning. Well, after such a fine, settled start to September, it's all changed as we head into a new week, turning increasingly windy and wet from the west. So as you 